All right, so you want to learn Blender, but the tutorials out there assume you know how to get around and some things are less than intuitive with this software. So you're lost. I get it. Well, hopefully I can be of help. In this tutorial, I'm using Blender version 2.69. So let's get started. We'll open up Blender. Now my Blender actually opens a little larger than the resolution of my screen size. So if this happens to you, you can just maximize the window and that should take care of that. Um, to close this little splash window, you just click on it. You would assume there would be a little X in the corner or a close button, but there isn't. You just click on it. And in Blender, it's quite different to select uh, items than in typical software. Normally you left mouse click to select something, but you'll see this doesn't work. It's pretty simple. It's just a right click. Why they do that, I'm not too sure, but that's how it works. Also, if you want to delete something, you select it, right click, and hit X on your keyboard. And this dialog pops up, and you can click on it or hit Enter to delete. On PC, you can just hit Delete on the keyboard. To center our cursor, Shift-C. And everything is window focus sensitive. So if you're down here in the timeline view, um, things you do on your keyboard that you want to affect up here are not going to work. You actually have to click in this and make sure you're in that window. And then when you do the uh, shortcut key, it will work. To open up a properties window for this 3D view, I would actually click on that little plus sign and drag it out. You can also just toggle it on and off with the N key. Or from the menu, View, since it has to do with your view, Properties. Like I said, you can actually see that that's a shortcut key there. Uh, tool Shelf, that's the, it, by default it, it's open, but we can press T again on the keyboard and that will pop that open. And opening extra window panes, this top little triangle in the corner. Um, it can be confusing because you can hit the plus and the triangle actually gives you something different. It'll open up another window pane for you. And what a lot of people do when they're first using this is they open up way too many windows. They just keep doing this and doing this and then they're like, how do I close them? And there is no X on them or anything. Uh, and then they try to grab here and close it in. They see like it's not working. Uh, the way you do it is you actually have to get your cursor back onto that triangle and drag it over. And the same thing works vertically as it does horizontally. So I'm drag it down to get rid of it. And to resize the window, you can put your cursor on the lower section of that window below this toolbar and you can drag it up and down. Uh, another mistake people will typically do is grab this part, they lose their toolbar and they're like, how the hell do I get this back? If you notice over here, there is a little kind of faded out plus sign. You click on that and you get your toolbar back. Now each of these sections is called a viewport. Uh, to change what's in the individual viewports, you can go to this little icon here and you can switch it. So this is the 3D view that we're looking at. If I made this into the graph editor, you see it changed and now I can switch back to 3D view. So you can make you know whatever window you want to be whatever editor you want. And the entire thing as a whole is your viewport layout and you can change it. Right here is where you change it. Uh, there's the one called default, which is what it launches into when you first open the program. And uh, another one that I use a lot is compositing. Uh, and you can go through the rest on your own. So modes and shaders. When the program launches, you're in object mode. Uh, you'll do some work in edit mode. And you may use some of these others as you go along. Uh, but this is where you would switch which mode you're in and shaders. Uh, we're looking at solid mode here. You can also look at rendered mode. 
texture mode and so on. Uh, as you follow different tutorials, they'll guide you as to what you should be in, but that's where you change your shader. Also, this program can work in layers. So here's the layers palette here. See, you lose the object that you had there. Uh, and this could happen. You could inadvertently click on a different layer and say, what happened? Well, you just look at the different layers and you'll find your object. I showed you how to delete an object, but I didn't show you how to create one. You can use the menu item up here, add. Let's just create another cube, mesh cube. You can do it that way. I will delete this. X on the keyboard, click. You can also use Shift A and you'll get a menu there. So that's a couple of options. And you may want to look at this object in different type of views within the 3D view. Um, to look at your left view, you could just do this. Let me zoom out here. Okay. Front view. So we can toggle between an orthographic view and a perspective view by going here. And again, the shortcut keys associated to this. Uh, when it says numpad 7, numpad 5, and so on, it literally means your numpad. If you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, um, you're not going to be able to use those shortcut keys. But you have a menu. Now let's have a look at the properties viewport over here. A lot of tutorial videos will instruct you to add material to an object. This is the materials page here new material. I won't go into that detail, but this is where you find your materials window. This is a world. You can change your background of your world, which you won't see any difference here until you actually go to render it. First thing is this render is just going to render out a single image. If you clicked animation, you'd be rendering out like if you had animated an object and there was several frames. Uh, that's the button you would click to get that. The quality of your renders, uh, depending which render engine you're in, you have a couple of different options. Uh, right now we have this resolution. You want to pay attention to that and the quality here, 50%, crank it up to 100% to get a better render there. We are in Blender Render Engine, which you see you can toggle down. Typically, most of these tutorials out there are going to talk about using Blender Render or Cycles Render. In Cycle Render, as soon as I click that, you'll notice some options changed over here. Let me toggle between the two. So same deal. You still have your resolution and the percentage of your resolution you can play with here. But in Blender Render, you also have sampling. So to get a nice render, I could, a uh, temporary render, I could say notch this up to like 300 or something. Well, uh, anything you want to actually render out in decent quality that you're going to use in a project, I, I recommend a thousand or above. But the problem here too is depending on the power of your computer, is it could take forever if you, if you have it set too high for the horsepower of your computer. I'm just set that back to the default 10. And let me take a quick look at a, re a rendered still image here. Okay, so another thing is you may ask, how do I close this render window? You select to make sure the focus is on it and then you hit escape on your keyboard. That's how you do it. And other key things about rendering out is where you're putting the file when you do a render. There's an output tab here, and you would just point this to wherever you wanted to um, have the render come out, create a directory, and so on. And the default here is PNG, which means it's going to do, if you did an animation, it means it's going to do uh, an image sequence. So There's a sequence of every frame in a PNG file which you could then import into other programs uh, like Final Cut Pro or 
Sony Vegas so that you could uh, watch it as an animation. You can also render out into individual full movie files, AVIs, um, QuickTime, and so on. I recommend going to image sequences to get your best quality and have the most control. And the other thing is your color options. Obviously, B and W is black and white. RGB, you're going to get some color. RGBA is your RGB color, but it also includes an alpha channel. An alpha channel will allow things to be transparent. So if you have a, a character and you just want to export that individual character because you're going to overlay that character on another video image or still image in your editing program, you can do that. And user preferences. If we go up to file and click user preferences, some tutorials will guide you to enable some add-ons. Um, some programs add-ons mean you need to install and you could install add-ons, but um, these add-ons are, most of these are already present in the system. It's just a matter of enabling them by hitting a checkbox. And any changes you make, be it your, your input, like we had said before, emulate three button mouse, or any add-ons you, you add on, they won't be there once you go back into the program unless you save user settings. So you gotta make sure you do that. And finally, if you go into your user settings and your interface and you mess it up beyond all recognition, um, you can always go back and reset things to factory settings by clicking File, Load Factory Settings, and I would then save your startup file. And that is it. Hopefully this was helpful. Please subscribe and enter a comment below. Thank you.